Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Run, King! Run, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. When you get up in the morning, there's nothing like a breakfast you really go for. Like, for instance, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk and fruit. These giant ready-to-serve grains of wheat or rice are premium grains. They're shot from guns, puffed to perfection, exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice shot from guns is good for you, too. Makes a thrifty deluxe family breakfast. Tomorrow morning, enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. In a small cabin about 20 miles from Dawson City, Beth Grayson was busily cooking her husband's supper. Beth was young and strong and bore the hardships of life in the North Country without complaint. She hummed to herself as she put more wood into the stove and placed the big iron frying pan over the heat. What? Why, who? Help me. I, I can't go any farther. My foot. Oh, what's wrong? Here, let me help you up. Can you get over to the cot? Yes, sir. I guess so. Oh, there. There. Are you all right? Yeah. Could, could I have some water, please? Oh, of course. Who are you? What happened to you? Well, I'm, I'm lost. I haven't eaten in a long time. I had some hot soup on the stove. Here's the water. I'll get the soup right away. I was just getting my husband's supper. Thank you. Mm. If you don't mind, I'll... I'll lie down. Oh, you're frozen. I'll pull that fur blanket over you. Why, you're shaking. I'll get the soup right away. That'll warm you up. Oh, it's, it's sure nice of you. I'm a trapper. I, I got lost somehow. I've been wandering around for days. It's not hard to get lost around these hills. Here's the soup. It's good and hot. Oh, it'll sure hit the spot. I'm Beth Grayson. My husband's a trapper, too. Started out as a prospector, but we didn't have any luck. So he's been trapping this winter to keep us going. Yeah, same as me. My, my, my name's Nick. Nick Smith. Oh. Well, as soon as you finish that soup, you better lie down and get warm. Tom, he's my husband. He'll be home any minute now. And we'll all have supper. As Beth hurriedly cooked the supper, she watched the bearded man who lay with his eyes closed, breathing deeply. His face looked gaunt and starved. His parka was ragged and dirty, and one boot was torn almost away from the foot that dangled from under the fur blanket. Then suddenly, she heard running footsteps, and a door burst open as her husband, Tom, entered breathlessly. Beth! Oh, Beth, I'll get it. I found gold. We're going to be rich. Tom, gold? Yes. Just by accident, I found a rich vein oh. down by the creek. I was oh, setting Tom, a trap. And... Be careful. Well, Don't sing anymore. What? Oh, who's that? Who's that man on the cot? He's a trapper. He stumbled in here about 15 minutes ago. I think he's asleep. Well, I hope he didn't hear you. I'd better see if he's asleep. He's not awake. I guess he didn't hear you. No, he's dead to the world. Come on outside so I can tell you. Tom, I, I just can't believe it. I'll have to get to town tomorrow and file a claim. Where did you say it was? Well, I was setting a trap down by the creek about five miles from here. A rock tore loose that I was standing on and a lot of dirt came with it. Oh, honey, it was the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. The creek right there must be full of gold because the vein leads right into it. Oh, Beth, we're going to be rich. Tom, 
I just can't believe it. I wish that man hadn't come. We can't talk about it in front of him and... Until you get the clean fire. <laughs> well, you'd better get back in the cabin before you freeze to death. Yes. Here, honey, take my snow glasses and put them on the shelf. All right, Tom. I'll unharness the dogs and feed them while you get supper on the table. It was hard for Beth and Tom to conceal their excitement as they ate supper with a stranger who wolfed his food like a wild animal, refusing to talk until every morsel was clean from his plate. He drank his hot tea all in one gulp and devoured a thick piece of bread as Beth filled his cup again. <laughs> Will you have another piece of venison, Nick? Yes, I, I sure will. I'm still a little hungry. I'm glad you found our cabin. Here's your tea. You know, I can't remember when the meal ever tasted so good. <laughs> I noticed that you limped when you came to the table. Did your foot hurt? Uh, I guess it's frostbite, and I, I've been wandering around for two days. It seemed a shame to wake you up even to eat. You were sleeping so soundly. I didn't even hear you come in. That soup warmed me up inside, and I dozed right off. Would, would you mind if I if I slept in your woodshed tonight? In the woodshed? Huh. Why, you'll sleep right here in the cabin. I'll fix a sleeping bag right beside the stove. I'm going to Dawson tomorrow, and you can ride on the sled. The following morning was bright and fair, and the early sun shone on the white snow from a sky that was clear and blue. Tom had gone out to harness the dogs. While inside the cabin, Nick fastened his parka and limped over to a corner of the room where Tom's revolver lay next to his snow glasses on the shelf. Beth turned from the stove quickly. She heard the click of the gun. What, what are you doing? Wait, Sandra, I'll shoot. What's wrong with Sit you, Nick? Sit down on that chair beside the table. Quick. And don't scream or this gun will go off. You yell for your husband, I'll shoot him when he comes in that door. Don't shoot. What do you want? Sit down, I said. All right. Please. Put what? your hands back in the chair. I'm tying you up. No, no. Get him back here. My arm. You're hurting me. Keep quiet, I said. <laughs> uh, just for good measure, I'll gag you with this towel. I told you to keep still. Don't you keep you quiet. I'll tie your feet. Oh, hold still. Uh, you won't be able to get out of this in a hurry. All ready to go, Nick. Stick him up, Tom. What? Don't move or I'll shoot you. What are you trying to do? Put your hands up and keep them there. All right, just don't hurt Beth. I'll give you whatever you want. Right now, I want that hunting knife you carry. Keep your hands up. All right. Uh, here it is. I'll keep it for you. Just what's the idea of this? We're going to take a little trip, you and me. A trip? You're going to show me just where you found gold yesterday. You heard me last night. You weren't asleep. I heard every word you said. I needed sleep and food, so I waited until after breakfast this morning to do something about it. Why, you Careful, dirty no... Don't keep those hands up. When Beth took you in and fed you, now you turn around it's and do this. It's your turn to turn around. I'm tying your hands behind your back with this rope. You'll be able to walk and lead me to your strike. Turn around, I said. You won't get away with this, Nick. Put your hands down behind you. I'll let you keep those mittens on so your hands won't freeze. <laughs> You're big-hearted, aren't you? If you behave and lead me to that claim... You won't get hurt. Neither will your wife. Oh. I'll bring you back here and tie you up for a day or so until I get the claim filed. Don't think I'm fool enough to believe that. It won't do you any good if you don't believe it. So don't try any monkey business. Oh. <laughs> now then, you take me straight to that gold claim. You walk ahead of me. And remember, I'm the one who's got the gun. Now get going. I, I have to have sun goggles. My eyes are weak. I can't stand the glare. Let's tell them for time. Start moving. I'll ride the runners, and you walk ahead of the dog team. I'll hurry it up. Let's go. As Tom strode ahead of the dog team, his brain whirled as he tried to figure a way out of his predicament. Though the creek where he had accidentally discovered gold lay to the west, he headed east to stall for time, hoping to meet a trapper or some friend who could help him. The early morning sun shone on the white snow with a blinding glare, and his unprotected eyes grew watery and bloodshot. After two hours of traveling, Nick grew impatient. You can't tell me that claim of yours is this far away. You aren't going to it, that's what. My trap line is 40 miles long, and the creek is almost at the end of it. Well, go faster, then. Well, this glare, I, I can't see very well. My eyes, something's wrong with it. Hey, pull, pull that. Now, listen to me. I'm getting sick of this. You're lying. There's nothing wrong with your eyes. I, I'm not lying. I can't see. I'm snow blind. Snow blind, nothing. That's just an excuse to keep from finding the place. I told you I couldn't stand the glare without my goggles. I'm telling the truth. I can't see. Well, I'll find out. Oh! Why, you dirty... If I could well, see, I... I guess I... you're telling the truth after all. 
You sure didn't see my hand coming in? Yeah, boy, the blasted look. All right, get on the sled. Go on. Stop pushing me. Sled right here. Get on it. What are you going to do? We're going back to the cabin. By morning, your eyes will be better. And this time, I'll see to it that you take me to the claim. I'll ask your wife where the creek is. If her directions don't fit yours, it'll be too bad for the both of you. All right, Mark! Get up! Mark! But back at the cabin, Beth had struggled with the bonds that held her. By rocking the chair back and forth, she got close to the hot stove. Twice she burned her wrist painfully, but at last the singe rope broke. She strained at it. With her hands free, she got the gag from her mouth. Oh, now if I can untie my feet, I'll go to the trading post for help. Oh, I must find Tom. A short time later, Beth, going as fast as she could on snowshoes, took a shortcut across country toward the trading post. As she neared the main trail, it was necessary to descend a steep slope. But in her haste, she lost her footing and pitched headlong toward the bottom. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Man, oh man, these three famous words, shot from guns, mean a breakfast treat that's really hot's hard to beat. Yes, for tasting swell, you just can't beat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. What's more, these ready-to-serve breakfast cereals actually are shot from guns. Listen. Yes, sirree. Premium grains of wheat or rice are exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat crisp and tender as nuts in November. And talk about flavor. Just shake out a bowl full right from the package. Then pour on some... That's right, milk or cream. And to really do it up, add some fruit. Like, say, sliced bananas. Man, oh man, there's a real treat. More important, long hours at school and play call for a hearty breakfast. And Quaker puffed wheat and rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So how about it? You'll be getting off to a flying start when you eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the famous big Quaker red and blue package. It's never sold in bags or boats. Now to continue our story. Beth lost her footing and fell screaming to the bottom of the slope. A short distance away, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police halted his dog team and spoke to Andy Ross, a trapper who accompanied them. Okay. Hold your husky. Did you hear that scream, Andy? Yes, I, I thought I did. These big fur hoods over our ears, it's hard to hear anything. King heard it. I saw him turn his head and point his ears. Yeah. He seems to know something's wrong. Come on, Andy. We'll leave the team here and see if we can find anything. Right, Sergeant. Go ahead, King. The great dog, King, had heard the piercing scream that rang through the cold silence. Leading Sergeant Preston and Andy, he approached the still figure that lay at the bottom of the slope. Good work, King. <laughs> what? Well, it's a woman. Must have hit her head when she fell. It's bleeding. I say, that's Beth Grayson. She lives about five miles from here. Huh? She must have been taking a shortcut to the trading post. She's still alive, but she's unconscious. we better take her to the post instead of trying to get her home. It's closer. I'll help you carry her. She isn't very heavy. I can get her back to the sled, all right. She hasn't broken any bones. It'll be safe to carry her. Her young husband, Tom, will be worried about her. He's a trapper. Maybe he's out on his trap line. Old Doc Brady's in this territory somewhere right now. Comes up this way once a month. You bring her snowshoes, Andy. I'll right. carry her. All right, King. Back to the sled, boy. Back at the trading post, Beth groaned as Sergeant Preston tied the bandage around her head. She lay still with her eyes closed as the Mountie turned to Andy, who watched quietly beside him. She'll be conscious soon, I think, Andy. Nothing more I can do for her. She'll be all right if she rests quietly until the doctor comes. Well, he'll be here soon. That Indian I sent can make fast time on snowshoes. But I think we ought to get word to her husband, though. Town be mighty worried if she doesn't show up. You say she lives straight west of here along the trail? Yep. Her cabin is back from the trail at the place where it branches from the creek. I'm going in that direction. I can stop off and tell her husband on my way. I'll send him here as soon as possible. 
While Sergeant Preston, with his dog team, made his way toward Tom Grayson's cabin, Tom and Nick approached it from the other direction. Tom, his eyes bound with a scarf, groped his way toward the door, guided only by Nick, who pushed him roughly. Go on, hurry it up. Go straight ahead. Is Beth all right? Beth! Beth! Where'd she go? She got away. Beth, where are you? Here uh, the ropes. She burned them off somehow. She must have gone for help. Well, Nick, I... I guess your scheme won't work after all. You won't get my claim now, and you'll be lucky if you get away at all. Uh, those dogs. I must hear someone killing them. You can't get away now, Nick. Whoever's coming will see you. It looks as though you're caught. Uh, I'm not caught yet. There's only one man on the dog team. Your wife isn't with him. If I could only see... Then I'll take care of you. Oh. I'll tie and gag you and put you in the woodshed back of the cabin. We'll see if I'm caught. A narrow door led to the woodshed back of the cabin. And Nick, having bound and gagged Tom, was just re-entering the cabin to get his gun when there was a knock at the door. He hesitated a moment, then decided he must bluff it through. But he started with surprise when he saw Sergeant Preston. I'm Sergeant Preston. You Tom Grayson? Uh, yes, yes, I am. Your wife was hurt on her way to the trading post today. She fell and hit her head. My wife? I'm sure she'll be all right after she rests a while, but it knocked her out for a time. But well, did she... did she talk to you at all? Well, I know she didn't, but Andy Ross knew who she was. You'd better get to the trading post as quickly as possible. She'll feel better if you're there. Well, sure, I'd better start right away. Well, I'm mighty glad you stopped to tell me, Sergeant. wonder if you'd mind if I made myself some hot tea. I didn't stop to eat my dinner this noon. I'm rather hungry. Well, no, not at all. You just go on in and help yourself. You... You won't mind if I don't wait, will you? Of course not. I'm going in the other direction anyway. Oh, uh, do you mind if I take my dog in with me? Not at all. Go ahead. Help yourself. Thanks. Come on, King. I just got back from my trap line, so my dogs are all ready to go. Thanks again, Sergeant. You're welcome, and thank you for letting me use your cabin. Oh, don't worry too much about your wife. I think she'll be all right when she gets some rest. Well, I hope so. Goodbye. Bye. You hungry, boy? All right. Let's see what we've got. As Sergeant Preston unpacked the food he had brought into the cabin with him, King circled the place, sniffing here and there, investigating every part of it. When he came to the door that led into the woodshed, his sharp ears pricked forward, and he sniffed under the door. Then he heard a muffled sound. What's wrong, King? What's bothering you, fellow? Oh, this door leads to the woodshed, I think. There, it's open. That's what you wanted? It's so dark in here, what... Why, it's a man. Good work, King. You must have heard him moving in here. I'll get the gag out of his mouth first. There. Thanks. Now I'll untie your hands and feet. Take it easy. You'll be all right in a minute. Who are you? I'm Tom Grayson. Tom Grayson? But that man, the one that let me into the cabin, he said he Who was... Who are you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I'm Monty. I'd have known, except that I can't see very well. I went snow blind. That man you talked to, his name is Nick. He tried to force me to tell him where I found a gold claim. He tied my wife up. Now she's gone. Your wife's at the trading post. She fell and hit her head on a stone oh, and I found her. That's I... why I came here for you. Oh, she hurt much? No, she'll be all right. Doctor's with her. Can you see it all now? A little, Sergeant. My, my eyes feel better now. I've had them covered. We've got to catch Nick, Sergeant. He has my dog team and I know their tracks anywhere. My lead dog lost a toe on his front foot. And Jinx, the wheel dog, has a bigger track than the rest of the team. Let's go after him right now. We'll catch him without any trouble. You can ride on the sled. Come on. I'll help you. Thanks. I'm certainly glad that dog of yours heard me, Sergeant. It was tied up so tight I could barely move. Before we go out, I'll bandage your eyes. There's still a glare on the snow, but it'll be dark soon. Here's a scarf. I think Nick would have killed Beth and me if I'd shown him where that gold strike was. I led him in the wrong direction. Hold still a minute. Yeah. My eyes are weak, but he wouldn't let me stop long enough to get my goggles from the cabin here. Oh. He thought I was lying and stalling for time. There you are. Thanks. When we catch, Nick, you can drive your team to the trading post and get your wife. Come on. It won't be hard to follow Nick's trail from here. Oh, his tracks are as clear as handwriting on a piece of white paper. They won't be, though, when he reaches the main trail. It's packed down hard. Here's the sled, Dom. Sit down. Thanks. Hey, King. Come here, boy. What are you doing, Sergeant? Letting King get the scent of Nick's track so we'll know who we're after. This is the man we want, King. We won't need a dog to find him. 
I'll be able to see the tracks of my team if he turns off the main trail. I can see well enough for that right now. Won't hurt any to have a double check. Up front, King. On King! On you, Oh, looking, white fella. Bring him back, boy. What's wrong, Sergeant? Mick wanted to make sure he'd have a good start in case I found you. He cut my traces part way through. They broke. Will it take long to fix them? Quite a while. He weakened them in five or six places. This will give him a good start. Well, he won't get away. I can tell the tracks of my team anywhere. We'll get him. We'll get him, all right. Won't we, King? In the meantime, Nick had reached the main trail. The long dog whip cracked over the heads of the dog team as he urged them on at a heartbreaking pace. Faster, you mongrel! Faster! Smash! Smash! Later, a light snow began to fall, leaving his tracks clear. And Nick knew his only chance lay in putting as many miles as possible between himself and the Mountie, so he didn't spare his team. As the miles flew by, the dogs became exhausted. And slowly, they slowed down in spite of the cruel whip, their sides heaving and their tongues dripping. It was at this point that Nick saw a man with a five-dog team crossing the trail ahead of him. He hailed him. Hey, you! You there! Wait a minute! The man waited as Nick approached and stopped. Oh, oh, oh. The dog team dropped in their tracks to rest. Where are you bound for, stranger? Me? <laughs> I just come from see my friend Pierre. I go home to my cabin. She is five miles from here. Well, you, uh, you wouldn't swap dog teams, would you? It's a better team than yours, but they're all tuckered out, and I need a fresh one. Uh, well, that, that is fine team you have, but mine is good, too. I'll give you all seven of mine. You just have five. Mine are better dogs, you can see that. You see, uh, I'm in a hurry. My uh, my brother is dying, and I have to get to him. Oh? You'll, uh, you'll never get a better bargain than this one, mister. Yeah, that, that lead dog he is fine animal. That wheel dog, he has good chest. Come on, Frenchy, make up your mind. Uh, Nobody else would swap you even for those curs of yours. Uh, we, I think maybe I'll do it. Here they are. Uh, now you're using your head. You take these dogs to your cabin. When they're rested up, you'll have the best dog team you ever owned. It had stopped snowing, and Nick smiled with satisfaction as he saw the clear tracks of Tom's sled turn off the trail to the left, driven by the Frenchman. Then Nick continued on the main trail, urging his fresh team on, even though he knew he had thrown off anyone who might be pursuing him. Push! Pass you, Hutch! Pass you! Push! Darkness was approaching as Sergeant Preston neared the spot where the tracks of Nick's sled turned off the trail. The Mounties' dog team had kept up a steady pace, and the tracks of the sled they were pursuing were clear in the newly fallen snow. Tom had taken the bandage from his eyes and peered ahead. Can you see now, Tom? Pretty well, Sergeant. Enough to see those tracks. That's my team, all right. I go snow blind quickly, but it doesn't last more than three or four hours. Right? Well, say, Sergeant, look. I'm turned off here. The tracks go to the left. Oh, King. Oh, you You're right, Tom. The King was going straight ahead. Ha, oh, King. Ha! Oh. That's funny. What's funny, Sergeant? King doesn't want to follow those tracks. Great Dog King stood still, refusing to change his course. He had been told to find a man, and his nose told him where that man had gone. He tried to tell his master why he refused to obey. He wants to follow those other tracks, Tom. The ones that lead straight ahead. Well, we can see, can't we? You're not going to let a dog influence you. King's following a scent. He's not depending on his eyes the way we are. But the scent of my dogs goes this way. King isn't interested in your dogs. He's following the scent of a man. Well, I'm not going to trust a dog, Sergeant. You can go that way if you want to. I'm going to follow the track to my team. If you don't get Nick, I'll do it myself. Go ahead if you want to, Tom. You may find your dog team. I'll bring Nick back to the trading post in the morning. I'm the one who'll bring him back, Sergeant. I know he went this way. And after the way he treated Beth, I won't promise that he'll be alive. All right, Tom, go ahead. I'll see you at the trading post in the morning. All right, King, straight ahead, boy. One King! One King! Darkness had fallen, but Sergeant Preston continued on the trail, trusting King to lead him to his quarry. Then suddenly, up ahead, he heard some dogs barking and saw the small light of a cabin as he rounded a bend in the trail. Oh, King! Hurry, oh, Huskies! We better leave the team here, boy. You and I can go more quietly. <laughs> With the big dog beside him, the Mountie walked toward the cabin slowly in the darkness. King growled, and his fur bristled as they neared it. The dogs, chained outside the cabin, barked frantically as they approached. The Mountie kept his eyes on the door, waiting for it to open. Suddenly, King sprang ahead of him in the thick fir trees near the cabin. And 
The roar of a gun shattered the stillness. Get away! Get off me, you mutt! Help! Get away, say! All right, King. Back, boy. Back. Get up, Nick. Your dog's warned you, so you thought you'd surprise me, eh? Take this dog away. Take him off. You're under arrest, Nick. In the morning, I'm taking you to Dawson. It was later the following day that Sergeant Preston entered the trading post, pushing Nick, handcuffed and sullen, before him. Tom Grayson rose from his seat beside the stove where he was sitting with Ben. Stand over there, Nick, and don't move. Sergeant, you caught him. I... Oh, I can't tell you how but foolish don't I Don't bother, feel. Tom. We saved time this way. How are you, Mrs. Grayson? I'm all right, Sergeant. Thanks to you. I brought my dog team back. Oh, this is Gene Lafarge. Nick traded teams with him. For sure, Sergeant. I uh, hope you not think I help him get away. He say it is fine well, that's all him. right, Gene. I brought your team back. It's out front. Uh, merci, Sergeant. Oh, ma foi. It is too bad his brother was not dying. That was such good bargain. <laughs> I wish I could apologize to that dog of yours, Sergeant. After the way he found me, I should have known I could trust him. The king doesn't mind. As long as I trust him, he doesn't care what anybody else does, do you, boy? <laughs> now you better get to town and file that gold claim, Tom. As far as you're concerned, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. Here's a tip. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the famous crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. You'll go for both delicious kinds. For variety, eat the Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. These tasty giant breakfast grains shot from guns are made from only the premium grains. So for the best, always insist on Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, a breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the Poisoner of Chiliwa. The Poisoner was after old Toby Dixon. You see, old Toby thought he had a mighty good hiding place for all the money he'd saved. But the Poisoner of Chiliwa was too smart for Toby. He was too smart for everyone for a time. He fought with a sinister weapon that left King helpless and brought the great dog to the brink of death. It's an exciting story you'll enjoy be sure to hear this exciting story Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.